Hello everybody, well, it's Weather Outlook, and today we'll be talking about some severe weather that went on for the, I believe, actually, let's go back to the Outlook. So yeah, um, for Tennessee, Kentucky, um, yeah, Tennessee, Kentucky, Missouri, and parts of Arkansas, we had a bit of a severe weather in this area here, and also we, actually, let me change that to a black color. So yeah, we had some severe weather going up in this area. But we also had severe weather take place in Florida. You can see just down here in the south, we had that slight risk in place in Florida as well. Um, you can see this is the tornado threat. They were expecting at they were expecting the potential for a isolated tornado. Um, there's that two percent area, and there was another two percent area down here for for Florida as well along the coast. And then here's another one. Um, the tornado threat for Florida was most mo mainly for a water spout threat. Um, so, but yeah, here's the wind damage threat, 15% area for Tennessee, and then there's another 15% area for the coast of Florida, and then uh, here's the hail threat, 15% area over here, and also 15% area for the coast of Florida as well. And then, um, that was pretty much it. So, yeah, that was pretty much what happened then. And then here was today's wind, or the, here was the today's reports for severe weather. We had two wind damage reports down here for the coast of Florida. And we had, I believe, some, yeah, around 90 wind damage reports in this area. And we also had a few tornado reports from Illinois right there. And also a few hail reports scattered throughout the area, but mainly a wind damage threat would, would, was taking place for mainly Tennessee, northern parts of Mississippi and Alabama. As those storms were weakening, they were letting off very strong outflow winds in this area and produced wind gusts in the 60s and 70s in front of the area or in that area. Here are the tornado threats. Um, they were very, very small tornadoes that touched down. Um, they were very weak tornadoes, didn't do much damage. Here's the hail reports. The largest hail that we had was one inch, and that was they were all in Illinois, as we had a couple of a uh, couple of multicellular storms move through that area and produce some decent sized hail. You can see that there, one inch in diameter hail. So nothing crazy, but brown um, quarter sized hail. Here are the wind reports. Most of these are unknown if you could look right here this is resembling the speed of the reported wind damage and um yeah so most of these were um unknown which means that there was no report of wind speed with these ones the only one that we really the only one that we got wind speed reports of were one in florida 61 miles an hour why is my thing so big yeah so one in florida which was 61 miles an hour along the beach and then another one which was also in florida this is not actually a pretty significant one um 71 monorail wind gust over in uh i can't read that very well um that county in florida as well so there was um a few wind damage reports but the others were just unknown so we won't um we could look at the damage but there's 90 room damage reports so we're not going to look at all of them um, here's the activity that went on for Florida. Let me take off the highways and just leave on the counties. Uh, okay. So here was the stuff that went on in Florida. Here was, was this morning. Sun was, um, rising right now in Florida. And you can see that, um, we had a nice amount of moisture rolling in this area right here. Decent amount of cape was setting up, and we did sit, get some convection to develop in parts of central Florida right there. You can see those first round of thunderstorms. Now, the main show or the main thing, the main reason these storms were really all throughout the state today were because of, well, we call those outflow boundaries, and they get left behind, or they get, um, it's pretty much just winds that are coming from a storm so let's say we have a storm right here 
the winds coming out of it spread out in all directions around it and then they go out and just spread out in every single direction around it and that's what these storms were doing they were letting out outflow boundaries that were um re-sparking more thunderstorms because that's what outflow boundaries do they they redevelop thunderstorms in front of it so um but yeah that round first round of thunderstorms weakened but then a second round developed in front of those thunderstorms and then a third round and then a fourth round over um over uh near the i believe palm beach or not palm beach um i, I forgot where that place is along the coast of florida and then those moved off overnight, and you can see we had even more storms develop kind of near Miami, actually. These storms right here were firing up and producing some small hail, intense lightning in some of them, or continuous lightning. And um, gusty winds were the main threats with these ones. Um, all the thunderstorms have left the area now. So that's pretty much what happened for Florida. Now let's go take a look at what happened for Tennessee and Kentucky. Let's take a look at what happened then. So this morning had a tiny bit of fog for patchy fog for this area near the Appalachian Mountains right there. You can see those little spots of um, patchy fog. And those um, quickly moved along as the day continued and then we had our first round of thunderstorms fire up we can see those ones up in missouri these suckers right here very weak ones very uh small thunderstorms that firstly developed and then we had the main show kind of fire up right around now you can see those thunderstorms kind of extend into a line um or a yeah like a, an organized little line and you can see those thunderstorms there um by the way the uh, little things that I have activated, the little um, orange dots kind of, are resembling lightning flashes in the lightning. So um, that's if that's you, if you were asking the the orange or sorry the yellowish orange, yeah these ones right here, those lightning strike colors, those are new ones, and then the red lightning strike icons resemble old lightning strikes, and then the blue ones resemble very old lightning strikes so um yeah the orange the orange ones are the new ones and then the red ones are the old ones and the blue ones are very old and then so yeah you can see those moved off down in the south produced quite a bit of lightning a very decent amount of lightning and then um so what pretty much happened is we got these storms to move off south and they definitely started to become outflow dominant in this area which means that they are producing outflow winds and wind damage um and those storms rolled through tennessee producing damaging winds up to 70 miles an hour and very small hail the hail, the hail threat was mostly confined to this area right here of thunderstorms um the hail threat kind of shut off right around there and was mainly a wind threat after that point and then those ones moved off to the south and then are now completely weakened. And we have a few few little lightning strikes with a little blip developed over central Mississippi. Or not Mississippi, central Tennessee. So um, nothing really crazy happened today. I mean, obviously something crazy did happen, actually. 90 wind damage reports. Um, I do think that this, or sorry, 95, I believe that is. Never mind, that is 65. What am I doing? I mean, 69. So, sorry, 69 wind damage reports were recorded in that area, not 90. My mistake. Um, so, yeah, but definitely, I do think that this was a overrated, or not overrated, underrated day. I think that um, the National Weather Service was definitely underrating this severe weather day. I did think that we were going to see... A, a reasonable amount of severe weather in this area today um, but they did luckily upgrade it to a slight risk so I definitely did think that this day definitely needed a slight risk in this area um, not so much for Florida storms as you can see we only had two wind damage reports down there 
So I don't think the slight risk was needed down there. I think we could have kept with the marginal risk, and that would have been fine. But, um, so yeah, um, that's pretty much it. Now let's take a look at some of these models just to see um, what severe weather we can be expecting in the near future or in future. Actually, let's take a look at uh, – do I don't have to pull that up? Do I – oops, okay. Uh, okay, so let's see here. Can I – pull that up okay here this is so um here is the day two this is for tomorrow what they're expecting severe weather wise um you can see we have one two three marginal risk areas that they're focusing for severe weather one over one of them for the um <clears throat> northern virginia area another one along a dry line setting up from border of mexico and texas going up through new mexico up through Co colorado and then up kind of up through Wyoming and then starting its way down through Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, and the Texas Panhandle. And you can see that right there. And then we have our air other area where they're um, expecting isolated severe thunderstorms for Montana. So um, we are going to start to see in the next, uh, I'd say about a couple weeks, not about a week and a half, two weeks. We're going to start to see warmer temperatures across the U.S., and we're going to start to see some severe weather spark up for the rest of the U.S., not just the southern plains, but for the rest of the U.S. is going to start to see some severe weather. Um, Oregon's going to start to see it. Um, Sacramento or the uh, eastern or, yeah, I believe, no, western parts of the Sierra Nevada mountains, we're going to start to see some isolated severe weather pop up there. Um, just really all the states are going to start to light up with isolated severe weather. But the main threat for severe weather is obviously going to be taking place in this area here, or also known as Tornado Alley. So we're going to have to watch for some pretty good severe weather there this May. Um, tornado threat, less than 2%. Wind threat. 5% area for everything. And then hail threat, same thing. Uh, <clears throat> gosh dang. Um, let's take it back. If we can go back to the day. Yeah, here's the day three. Um, this is where we're going to expect some even lar or more significant tornadoes. Or not, yeah, tornadoes actually. This is more looking like a tornado outbreak day. Do you think that? Based on what the models are saying right now, I do think that there's a potential for the day two outlook to come out and definitely warrant a enhanced risk somewhere within this area. Um, if we look at the problemistic, they do have a significant hatched area resembling potential for significant severe weather in that area. So we're going to have to watch this area for some tornado. For Actually, all hazards are going to be possible with this storm system that rolls through so um i think this be this is going to be it for today hope you have a great day don't forget to like and subscribe if you like my videos and comment if you think i should improve anything on my videos have a great day